All right, guys, so now we're going to jump into one of the most important mechanisms in all of organic chemistry. And it's a mechanism that you're never allowed to forget. So what I teach you in the next 20 minutes, like, it's going to stick because you're going to need it for your, obviously for orgo, for your graduate exams, and even in graduate school. If you're planning on going to graduate school for anything pre-health, you're still going to need to know this reaction. And that's called the SN2 mechanism. So let's dive right into it. All right. So... What the, if I were to just give it a tagline and just say in one sentence what an SN2 mechanism is, okay? What it is is that a negatively charged nucleophile, hopefully all of that is words that you should be comfortable with, negatively charged nucleophile, reacts with an accessible leaving group, okay? Now, leaving group, you should know what it is. Accessible, maybe you're a little confused, but we'll define, define it, okay? To produce substitution, oh, you know what that is, in one step, all right? So let's go ahead, I just want to get right into it, let's just draw this mechanism out, all right? So I have this nucleophile that I'm just generally putting as NU negative, there's a lot of different nucleophiles out there, it doesn't really matter the identity right now, okay? Now I have to figure out, I'm reacting it with an alkyl halide. What did I say alkyl halides were good at? Leaving, okay? So what that means is I have to figure out what's the electrophilic part of this molecule, because this is my electrophile. And what is it going to look like after it reacts? Okay, so how do I find out which part's electrophilic? Does it have a positive charge already on it? No. So I'm going to have to draw the dipole. What does the dipole look like? Well, remember that halogens pretty much always pull away from whatever they're attached to. So I would have my only major dipole is pulling away from the carbon. So what I would have is a negative here, a partial positive there. Where is my nucleophile going to want to attack? it's gonna to wanna to attack the carbon, okay? So the electrophilic part is not the X, it's the carbon, okay? So I know I'm gonna start off my arrow from my nucleophile, and I know I'm going, going to attack that carbon. But now, actually, we have a choice, okay? Because what we have is a distinct set of sides, okay? So let's think about it this way. This is my carbon, and in the past, I haven't really worried about exactly how I draw my arrows because I haven't been very picky, okay? But if you think about it, there's actually two different sides to this carbon. Let's say that the X side, the one with the halogen, is called the front side, okay? So the X has three lone pairs, one, two, three, okay? So that would be what I would consider the front side. So I'm just going to write here that's the front, okay? And the back side would be everything that's on the other side over here. And the back side, what it's going to have is just like a hydrogen and then some alkyl groups. So this would be a methyl group and an ethyl group. Okay? Which of these two sides, front or back, do you think is going to be the easiest for my nucleophile to approach? Okay? And let's think about it this way. We know that it wants to hit the carbon. So no matter what, it's going for the carbon. But what all I'm asking is, is it going to try to go from the front side or the back side? It turns out that the front side is a really bad option. Why? Because the nucleophile, remember, it already has extra electrons. Okay, It's got extra electrons it's trying to get rid of. In order to go through the front side, it would need to pass through a bunch of electron clouds from the halogen. Okay, Do you think that's going to be very easy to do? It's actually going to be almost impossible. It doesn't happen. Okay? Those electrons are going to repel each other like crazy. So front side attack is actually impossible. It's never going to happen. Okay. So what that means is that this is going to lead us to one of the most inappropriate phrases in all of science, and that is backside attack. All right. So as messed up as that sounds, alkyl halides are totally down with it. All right. Backside attack is something that they're all about, and we're going to be doing this every day. All right, for the rest of organic chemistry. So I hope you guys are cool with that. You got to get used to it pretty quick. So backside attack is the way to go because it's the way that's less, basically less hindered. It's going to be a lot easier for those electrons to pass through the backside where there are not as many electrons as the front. Okay. So now what we need to do is we have to draw the transition state of what this is going to look like. Okay. Because we uh, let me just ask you guys: Am I done with this mechanism? Are, do, I, do I need to draw any more arrows, or am I done? No, we should draw some more arrows. Why? Because remember that this is going to be a nucleophile and electrophile. 
that does not have an empty orbital. Notice that there's no empty orbital here. This carbon already has four bonds. Okay, so this carbon already has four bonds. If I make a new one, that's five. So if I'm making this bond, I'm gonna have to break a bond, and you guys already know what I'm gonna break. I'm gonna break the the alkyl, I mean the halide off. I'm gonna break the halogen off. All right. So that means that I'm making a bond and I'm breaking the bond at the same time. This is going to le lead to something called a transition state. Okay, A transition state is just a high energy um, phase of the reaction that is very, very short lived. Okay, What it means is that it never even really happens. Uh, what, what I'm trying to say is it cannot be isolated. Okay, It's a very high, high energy thing that it must happen because we know that it must go from one state to another. But if I tried to just isolate it in a test tube, I would never be able to isolate transition states. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw what it would look like. It would be a carbon, okay, and it would be attached to three things for sure that are just single single bonds. It'd be attached to a methyl group. That's the one in the front. A hydrogen in the back, and then an ethyl group, right? And I'll just put the ethyl group facing down because I'm going to need all the space I can get. All right. Now this is the interesting part. We just said that I'm making a bond and I'm breaking a bond, and it's all happening in one step. Okay, so that means that I'm gonna have to draw partial bonds. So that means that my nucleophile is partially making a bond to that carbon, and my halide is partially breaking a bond to that carbon. Okay? On top of that, now this carbon has too many bonds. Okay, it has five instead of four. So I'm gonna have to put partial negatives on these atoms, okay? What that means is that, remember that carbon wants to have four bonds, now it has five. So in this transition state, it's extremely unstable. Carbon does not like to have this many bonds. I have to indicate that it has one too many by putting negatives that are distributed. Okay? So there we go. That's our transition state. If you ever see this little like double dagger, that means transition state. Okay? Like I said, this is something that it must exist for like a nanosecond, but it's not something you could isolate. Okay? After this reaction is done happening, after it's all completed, all happens at one time, now I have to figure out what my products are going to look like. Well, what I'm going to have now is that I'm going to have my nucleophile. Okay? But now my nucleophile is going to be attached to have a single bond. I'll draw it in blue because that indicates the arrow that was just made to that red carbon. And what is that red carbon going to be attached to? The same three things it was attached to before. So it's going to have that methyl group. It's going to have that hydrogen. And now the ethyl group, because the nucleophile came from the back, my ethyl group is getting pushed towards the front. OK, so that's going to be important. Let's just hold on to that thought. OK, on top of that, is there anything else that we need to draw? Our leaving group. So our leaving group is going to get x negative. OK, so first of all, how can I tell that a substitution reaction just took place? Well, I can tell because things substituted. Before I had a carbon with an X, now I have a carbon with a nucleophile. Before I had a nucleophile with a negative, now I have an X with a negative. See how everything perfectly swapped? So this is definitely substitution. Okay?